Welcome to Peace, Love, and Guns. Today we've got a very special treat for you. Today we're going to show you the HK SP5K. This is the case that it comes in. It's kind of a high grade looking pelican case. It's got these nice little butterfly twist clasps. And this is what you get in the package. It also comes with a second magazine, which we have I'm getting coon fingered right now. So you get the gun, a sling, and a disassembly tool, so a screwdriver plus some kind of disassembly tool. So the Mag Lula Up Lula um, 9mm slash pistol loader doesn't really work great for these. One. So it's surprisingly easy to load with how many bullets we're putting in here. How many cartridges? Got a few witness holes here. I imagine that's 10, 20, and 30. Welcome to Peace, Love, and Guns. Today we're taking a look at the HK SP5K, the civilian model of the MP5K. Let's give it a shot and uh, see just how fun it is. This is basically childhood wish fulfillment. Um, everybody knows and loves the MP5, and this is essentially an MP5K civilian model. So let's shoot it. Uh, naturally, we have to do the HK slap. So magazine in, make sure it's good, and we should be good to go. So uh, this is common with the MP5, uh, or rather this is part of the MP5's uh, battery of arms. It doesn't have a bolt hold open uh, like AR-15s and a lot of uh, kind of more modern guns do. Um, it's kind of a artifact of the time. Uh, this is uh, very low recoil. Uh, so initial impressions, super cool to shoot, very low recoil, uh, pretty easy to point and miss the target that you're shooting at because you're just shooting randomly um, but yeah my initial impressions are pretty favorable uh, I wish I had a buttstock that's my only complaint so uh, 30 rounds and uh, the receiver right here does have a little bit of warmth to it uh, lets you know you've been shooting it some uh, let's take a look inside that action here That rail really gets in the way. Yeah. It's for them high speed red dots that people can do three gun with it. You know, they transition from <laughs> rifle to pistol. So I mentioned a moment ago that uh, the MP5 is kind of a, uh, a, a relic of its time. So it has some design uh, choices to it that were revolutionary at the time, uh, such as it had mounts for a claw mount. You can see that the way that this Picatinny rail mounts it goes on to these little latching points here. So this gun has some integrated mounting capabilities that are proprietary to HK claw mounts and it would let you put a, a, a red dot sight or if this were like say a G3 or something, one of the larger 5.56 or 762 variants, um, you would be able to put a optic on there, magnified optic. But um, it's kind of an artifact of its time so as a new uh, as a new manufactured weapon to kind of bring this into a more modern um, 
what modern gun owners expect they kind of have to throw this picatinny rail on there which kind of takes it out of its original form factor it kind of changes the silhouette just a little bit and what we're noticing is that doing the quote unquote hk slap is a little bit a little bit more difficult because of this rail here but that's probably not a whole lot of bother to a lot of people um, especially since having the rail for a lot of people is going to outweigh um, being able to do this cool guy movie mode uh, loading action. Honestly, it's easy enough to take off if you don't yeah. put anything on it. But I can tell you, if you put actual optics on there, you're not going to be doing the slap anyways. Right, true. Some notable differences from the military and police version, the MP5K. The SP5K is, of course, semi-automatic only. And we notice that the cool pictograph here showing safe and fire uh, in the classic HK red and white styling is there. However, naturally the full auto markings, which goes all the way down into happy mode, that is not there. Um, another thing that it's lacking is the vertical foregrip. Because the American firearms laws are as they are, civilians are allowed to own this gun as a handgun or as a pistol. That being the case, pistols are not allowed to have foregrips. So HK has outfitted with this. I think it's a rather handsome looking uh, foreend um, in place of the HK pistol grip style. Uh, it's kind of a good compromise and it's a little bit reminiscent of the MP5 SD series with the integrated suppressors. Uh, this barrel extension uh, might be an eyesore to some. Uh, I kind of think it is cool in that MP5 SD kind of sense. The MP5 SD series being the integrally suppressed MP5 series. Um, this also probably has some good application if you were to, say, stretch this out into a home defense use. It would put more of the muzzle blast and concussion forward and probably help cut, cut down on some of the uh, flash that comes off of the muzzle. But overall, I think it looks kind of cool. So this is a look kind of down the bore. Um, it, this muzzle device doesn't go all the way over the top here. So it doesn't completely cover. So you get some gas escaping from that, potentially some flash. But most of the concussion and flash should be coming out the front of this. So I think that that uh, maybe stretches the use of it just a little bit. It's also probably kind of a safety design choice for HK so that you don't have uh, issues like the kel KSG had with people holding forward on that bad boy, firing, pumping, pumping forward, their hand slipping off, and then them blowing their hand off with a 12 gauge load. So we've got this grip stop here as well as a little bit of a, a muzzle device to kind of help people from slipping out and getting in front of that muzzle. Overall, I think it's a good looking uh, muzzle device. It's got these little indentations here, which might suggest you can put your thumb there. But again, I kind of feel like that's, it's, it's, it's suggestive almost that you should put your thumb there and it feels good. However, um, this, is some kind of ABS plastic. I don't know that I would put my thumb there habitually um, because you are in front of the bore actually at that point. The barrel doesn't start here. The barrel starts here and this is um, this is not part of the metal solid workings of the gun. So I don't I don't know that I recommend putting your finger there. Perhaps over the charging handle, which is non-reciprocating. If you have to hold it that way, you could of course take a modified grip uh, and hold it however you choose. Maybe not that way. Personal, personal feelings on the matter. But um, all in all, that, that forend looks uh, pretty sexy. So the sights on the SP5K are very much the HK Classic sights. You've got a front hooded sight. Uh, it's a ring with a rather thick um, front post. This rear barrel can be flipped for different ranges or light conditions. MP5 sights are kind of designed around CQB. Um, they've got a really wide rear aperture 
and then the front hooded sight. It's almost, it's designed so that you could really just put this circle in between the rear sight. And um, if you're inside of a, a room, for example, your shots are gonna be on target if you align that up. It allows you to use it in low light conditions as well. And then you have a various selection of apertures for shooting at further ranges if you have time and uh, ability to do so. It's almost like you have to have, if you can't do a fully loaded one. You can, but honestly, if I have time, I'm gonna sit there and lock the handle, the charger and handle back. Kind of one finer point with the HK SB5K is uh, loading it with the bolt down is uh, kind of difficult. Like we can't get that to go in. Um, that might be outside of its battery of arms. I'm not 100% sure on that, but um, it definitely goes in easily with the bolt locked to the rear, uh, ready for that HK slappage. Um, just kind of want to show inside the bolt, inside the, the breech with the rounds. I don't know if we can see that. Assuming the light permits. Yeah. So, Takedown uh, is very HK-esque. Grip feels good. This is a futuristic submachine gun from days gone past, but not a submachine gun because it's a civilian model. Hey, where does this gun fit into your collection? Well, it's uh, really f***ing ah! cool. That's basically why you would buy this gun. I could see it performing double duty in the civilian capacity as perhaps in some cases a home defense weapon. I've long, for a long time said that my ideal home defense weapon and I encourage people, this is my mileage, I encourage people to make a handgun their home defense weapon because it enables you to have a controllable weapon that is operable with one hand easily. Sure you could shoot a shotgun or an AR-15 one-handed but um, you're probably going to be better off with one-handed shooting in that instance, in that scenario, with a pistol. It also enables you to have a free hand for turning on light switches, calling the police, uh, extracting loved ones, uh, opening doors, etc. Um, perhaps uh, as a standoff to push somebody back. Um, so I think that the advantages of having a handgun as a home defense weapon outweigh doing something like a long gun, like a shotgun and whatnot. Now this is a $2,600 gun or something to that effect. MSRP is $2,699. MSRP is $2,699. That's kind of expensive for a home defense weapon. Uh, they, there are plenty of options which are much more cost effective that will probably be better options for you than this, but with what I said about the handgun as a home defense weapon, uh, as a frame of reference, I think that something like this for certain individuals could pull double duty because it is controllable enough to be able to shoot one-handed. It's not super front heavy. You would still be able to operate doors, light switches, drag people away, etc. Uh, the recoil is such that it is very easy to control. And since it is a still a two-handed weapon, um, it is still a handgun. Um, you can use this grip to get a, a stable shot, um, even shooting from the hip. You might be better off shooting from the hip with something like this size and package than shooting from the hip with even a handgun. Just a consideration, if you have one of these in your collection, uh, it might be a great gun for grandpa or grandma to keep at their bedside and slap that bolt down and go to town with it uh, in the event that they should need to defend themselves. Who knows? But the primary use case for this is this is a fun gun to shoot. It has a lot of recognition from Hollywood and video games. If you uh, have seen any media in the past 20 or so years, um, I mean, they had different types of MP5s in the Die Hard series. Resident Evil had uh, some cool MP5K action. Uh, they're all over the place. Good, clean, fun.
what more can we say about it? So I'm going to shoot with a standard pistol grip um, because HK says you can do that and they show pictures on the website of people doing that. So we're going to show how cool that looks. Uh, so there we go. We got it hot. We're going to switch the safety off and we're going to shoot it like a handgun at that far right target. So obviously you can do that, but it kind of sucks. Um, it's it's definitely awkward. It's not like shooting a regular handgun to hold it like this. It is a little front heavy for that kind of action. Uh, where I do see its usefulness is being able to shoot it like so. Um, one thing that we talked about earlier, perhaps off camera, was that the bolt is non-reciprocating, so you can shoot it like that. If that had slapped you in the hand. Yeah, ow, my <laughs> thumb. Uh, I have a little tendonitis going on, so that would have been excruciatingly painful. Um, but yeah, so the bolt does not reciprocate. That is, it does not move back and forward when the gun is loading the next round. So you can shoot it like that. Um, that may get in the way for using your sights, depending upon your thumbs and hand placement. All right, so this is what one-handed shooting looks like. Perhaps uh, I can operate my light switch and then... Um, shooting it from the hip. Shooting this uh, like a pistol, two-handed, even with the stability that that offers, um, what I found was that at this distance, probably about 21 feet, um, putting that front sight equal with the rear aperture, uh, I was on shot four shots in a row when I was really taking my time and then I kind of just started having fun uh, popping off shots so this thing being that it has a five or so inch barrel uh, it is it has basically handgun accuracy or slightly higher like a five inch barreled handgun um, it's definitely a larger form factor some of which is to its credit but um, yeah accuracy is uh, pretty much as expected with the MP5, or rather the SP5K. We'd like to thank the benevolent donor that has allowed us to shoot this today. This is a brand new gun that Gray Fox Gunsmithing got in and is transferring to one of his customers. And um, I was shown a picture of it and I said, wow, that looks really cool. I want to shoot it. And Gray Fox Gunsmithing was kind enough to go and request from this uh, customer of his if we can shoot it. And he was kind enough to allow us to put 100 rounds through it. So uh, that's what we've done. And we do thank you for allowing us to uh, make uh, some awesome content for this channel. Being able to shoot an MP5 is somewhat of a childhood dream of mine. Very, very cool uh, to have somebody buy a new expensive toy for themselves and then let us take it out for the first test drive that is super cool so we thank you and um yeah we look forward to shooting more cool stuff on the channel make sure you comment uh, on the video we like to have discussions with folks down in the comments uh, like the video and subscribe if you have not already that helps us out tremendously we're trying to hit a thousand subscribers so um once we get to a thousand we're gonna give away our old camera that we used to film kind of the majority of our videos up to this point. If you have any need for any horse training, breeding, or purchasing, you can contact William Britton at Gray Fox Ranch. He also is a gunsmith, so Gray Fox Gunsmithing. The links will be down in the doobly-doo below. We're always thankful to have his uh, support on the channel and allow us to come out and shoot up their fine property. If you like this video, you might like some of our other videos. We have a playlist that YouTube does not put in recommended suggestions because it is us blowing up stuff. Yes, we like to blow stuff up on Peace, Love, and Guns a lot. And we have a long playlist. Our 
repertoire, our resume, our curriculum vitae of blowing stuff up grows by the year. Um, you can check that out up here or in the description down below. The playlist has lots of things. We blow up a toilet, we blow up pumpkins, um, we use a uh, sure shot binary compound from our sponsor, the gun cleaners. We blow up lots of stuff. YouTube doesn't suggest it, so it gets buried, but I know that my viewers out there wanna see this. So if you do, please don't hesitate to check out that playlist. Uh, I wanna give another special shout out to somebody that uh, is constantly uh, doing shout outs for my channel. If you have any love for me whatsoever, please go and check out his channel. That would be Robert Drapp with uh, Rob's Random Roms. Uh, he is constantly supportive um, and uh, one of Peace, Love, and Guns' biggest advocates. So if you're into retro gaming, I really encourage you to go check out his channel. The link will be down below or up here or down below. So check him out in the doobly-doo. So I have, for the past couple months, been taking my time testing the Urban Carry G2 Cadet Holster. And that review is sure to come shortly. Um, be looking out for that. Make sure you subscribe uh, because I think that I'll be able to provide some uh, interesting insights on the Urban Carry G2 Cadet. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. What? So here we have Nicole Britton with Gray Fox Ranch. She's going to shoot the SP5K because uh, why wouldn't you? I mean, it's because here. We've got uh, 100 rounds to shoot, and uh, let's do it. So I just stick it in. That's what she said. All right. Very easy. There you go. See, easy. Whatever's comfortable. All right. Give us a fun little triple tap. Alright, I think I got him. Want to shoot some more? Yeah. Okay, uh, so we probably got close to 30 rounds in a short uh, time period. And what I noticed is that holding this like this, this gets hot. So um, perhaps this isn't the best place to grip after prolonged firing. Just a short, uh, a little addendum to uh, what we've been talking about here. Womp womp. That's 100 rounds of 9mm Parabellum through the HK SP5K. Again, we want to thank the generous person that allowed us to shoot this today. And um, 